Jamie from Play to Learn Preschool. I hope that you had a wonderful summer. Gem and I have been on sporadically um, over the couple, last couple of months, but we are back every day in the classroom at least, working to get our environment set up for our students when they return on September 5th. And so we're gonna try to hop on as much as possible to share some back to school ideas with you. So I'm so glad that you're here. If you're joining me, let me know where um, you are and when you start school, I'd love to hear it. So in September, we, Gem and I, will be starting our 13th school year together. I did six years before we opened the preschool, so it's the beginning of my 19th school year. And what I know about the first day of school um, is that it is so tricky. You know what they say about you only get one chance to make a good first impression? I think that's so true about the beginning of preschool. When our students first come to school, a lot of times they're so nervous. You know, there's just so many new things. They're away from their parents, a new environment, new friends, lots of people. It is really a nerve-wracking and exciting day. And as much as we have to teach them in terms of learning to do the routines and getting to know each other, the most important thing we can do in that first 30 minutes that they walk into our classroom, hi you guys, hey everybody, is to make them feel calm and comfortable. And so we have, for the last, I don't know, 10 years or so, done the same first day of school activity. It is a home run for us every time we, I'd say like 99%, it's a success with our students and it really helps them be calm and be engaged in the activity so that they are not thinking about their parents leaving and that kind of thing. So I'd like to share with you our very first day of school go-to activity, the same one we do every year with every class. And hopefully if you're stuck for what to do those first few minutes or that first hour, first half an hour, um, that this might give you a simple idea too. So my go-to activity for the very beginning of the very first day of school is my, uh, oh, the camera's backwards, sorry, is what I call magic Play-Doh. And so we sing a little hello song when they first come, but truth be told, like half the kids aren't even there on the carpet and some of them are crying. We usually have the parents walk them in on the first day. And so I get Betsy out, which is always a crowd pleaser, my puppet, if you haven't seen any of the other videos. And I say, Betsy has something so special for you boys and girls. She knows that you are going to be a super star preschooler this year. And you can find out if you're gonna be a superstar preschooler this year by using magic Play-Doh. And so then Betsy gets her little beak. I should have pulled her out. She's missing you guys. She's missing everybody. She's been stuck in her mailbox all summer. She gets out this bag and I let each of the kids reach in and they get a ball of magic Play-Doh. And I have Betsy tell them because you know they're not listening to a word I say that the thing about Magic Play-Doh is you can tell if you're going to be a superstar if your Magic Play-Doh changes colors when you play with it. And so then the kids, you know, they're like, <laughs> so now if it stays white, then that probably means that, it, you know, you should go home with your, no, don't say that. You should go home with your parents, go ahead. <laughs> but if you squeeze it and it changes colors, then you know you are gonna be a superstar preschooler. So I let them all come up and take a bag out of the magic Play-Doh, and then we start to play with it. So I just wanna show you how I make magic Play-Doh. I have a go-to Play-Doh recipe. I think every preschool teacher has her own right go-to Play-Doh recipe. I love I loved my cooked Play-Doh. I know cooked Play-Doh is a pain in the neck if you don't have a kitchen, but I just make it the night before and it stays together really well. It's never crumbly, it's never sticky. Hi everybody. It lasts forever in a sealed container in a Ziploc or in a Rubbermaid tub. And so I love my cooked Play-Doh. Uh, I've tried a bunch of different recipes, but this one's my favorite. And so what I do is just make a big batch of plain, it's not really white because the, the flower is kind of yellow, but plain Play-Doh. And then I take half of it and I dye it really dark colors, like really dark purple. I just use food coloring or, you know, cake, cake coloring or whatever. Different colors, right? And then what I do is roll the, the colored Play-Doh into a little ball and roll the white Play-Doh into a pancake. 
at home before the kids get there. You know, the night before, this is like my night before activity. And so then I just take my pancake and I put my ball on it and I just wrap it up, kind of, uh, my pancake's not big enough, kind of like, um, oh, I don't know. You just, so you're just gonna wrap the ball of dough, the colored ball, in the white Play-Doh like this, right? And I just put these, I might need a little more white Play-Doh. And then I just put these white balls in Ziploc bags. And that's, look, I needed a little bit more white Play-Doh. Sorry, that's the trouble with live TV, live Facebook. So I just put this magic Play-Doh into the bag. And then they just look like they're little balls of white Play-Doh, right? So each child will get a bag of magic Play-Doh. And then we let them take it over to the table and figure out if they're gonna be a superstar preschooler. And usually at that point, I give the signal to the parents like, okay, go, go, go. You know, because it's a great opportunity. The kids are sitting, they really want to work that Play-Doh. Gives us a chance to chat with all of them and it gives the parents the chance to say, okay, my child is calm, playing, and it's okay for me to go. And I usually give the parents like a, good job parents, out the door you go, you know, kind of a signal. And so when they get their magic Play-Doh, I'll make another one. If you've got really little kids, like three-year-olds, I would just make little balls because their hands are not gonna be able to handle, um, you know, a great big ball of Play-Doh. If you have pre-K kids, you could give them a nice big chunk. So they get their Play-Doh out of the bag and they take it, you know, over to the table and then they just start playing with it. And what happens, of course, is that as they squeeze the Play-Doh, it changes colors, it's magic. And, you know, the more you play with it, the darker it becomes. But the kids are fascinated by this little change. They'll keep their attention. It'll give you a chance to talk with them, to comfort anybody who needs comforting because everybody's busy trying to figure out if their Play-Doh is magic. If they're gonna have a magical, wonderful superstar school year. Now, I know that there are different opinions on this, but you could add a little glitter. You know, when you put the dark, um, ball of Play-Doh in the middle. It's not really up to you and how crazy you want to get on the first day of school. My friend Mary Catherine probably used the whole thing in the middle. Um, but it's really up to you how much mess you want on the first day of school. I know other people also put like a thumbprint and drop the food coloring right inside the white dough. And I've done it that way, but the problem of course is when they first squeeze it, the food coloring will get on their hands. And not all the kids love to go home, you know, with blue hands or purple hands or pink hands. So I like to do the colored dough wrapped in a little blanket of a white pancake. So then they go home with their magic Play-Doh. And I like, um, you know, to, to let them take it home on that first day to show their parents. And so I just made these little like, we're gonna have a super school, you're like little bag tags. And I just take it to the top and you could tape it. Um, or, you know, I'll just put a little, you know, a staple on it. And then I write the child's name on the back and they get to take that home on the very first day of school. So it's a really easy, good activity. I'll talk a little bit more in other videos about how we also practice all the routines, practice hanging up our backpacks, practice um, sitting on the circle. But for the very, very first half an hour, we do this magic play-doh activity because it's impossible to teach the routines if half the class is crying. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I like to give them something to keep their hands busy, keep their minds off the fact that they might be missing mom. And then after they've done that, then we kind of go into the practicing how we do school. And we'll talk about that in other videos. So anyway, um, this magic Play-Doh, I just glue it to a gift bag that I got at the dollar store, whatever, Michael's. Um, that tag and then these tags uh, are just a you can print them for free I left a link in the video description if you're on your phone it's probably down if you're on your computer I don't know it's left or right up or down but wherever the video description is you can go to that link and then way at the bottom there's a you can just click and print the tags if you'd like to use these with your own class the play-doh yes yeah, somebody asked the play-doh recipe is also on that link um, it's just five ingredients and I cook it the night before it lasts forever. So anyway, I highly recommend Magic Play-Doh if you're looking for a great activity for your students on the very first day of school. If you've already started, my hat is off to you. Well done. If you're like me and still have two weeks, I hope it goes well and I will see you again next time. Thanks for joining me. Have fun playing and learning with your kids. See you soon. Bye everybody.